Hey friends, and welcome in to A Walk Through the Word, Daily Bread with Crystal Fry. I am your host, Crystal Fry, and in today's episode, we're looking at Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14, to talk about pressing on toward what's ahead. Thank you for being here with me today, and I pray that you will listen with an open heart to hear the Word of God speaking to you. All right, friends, let's dive in. God's Word is powerful. The missing link is our identity in Christ. When we know who we are and who He created us to be, that is when we can truly walk in freedom. You are never alone. There is hope, and that hope is Jesus Christ. Today we're looking at Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14, which read, Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So friends, today we are in the book of Philippians, which is the letter that Paul wrote to the church at Philippi. And just before our passage today, Paul talks about having no confidence in the flesh, right? Not putting your confidence in your own abilities, in your own uh, accomplishments, all of those things, right? But instead, he says that he counts all of that as rubbish for the sake of Christ, so that he may gain Christ and be found in him. So then as we get into our passage for today, He's talking about pressing on toward the ultimate goal, the ultimate goal, which is to be with Christ in heaven. If we back up to verses 10 and 11, that gives us kind of the precursor to how we start with our verses for today. Not that I have already obtained this. What has Paul not, what does Paul feel like he hasn't already made been made perfect. He hasn't obtained what? Verses 10 and 11 say, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. And then Paul tells us, he knows he hasn't already obtained this. He knows he hasn't been made perfect yet. But he is pressing on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. He is pressing on so that he can experience everything that God has for him. Everything that he has in Christ Jesus. And I find it very interesting here how Paul references past, present, and future. So as we look at verse 13, the second half of verse 13, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Friends, there is a very important message for us in these words. Forgetting what is behind. That means letting go of your past, letting go of your failures, letting go of the woulda, shoulda, couldas, letting go of All of the things that try really hard to keep you stuck back there. 
If you are in Christ, you are a new creation. That's written in Scripture. When God forgives our sins, he thinks of them no more. That is also written in Scripture. Why then do we continue to replay them over and over and over and over again? Staying in the past, reliving past mistakes, past hurts, past failures, even wonderful things that happened in the past, reliving the past over and over and over again is essentially keeping you inside a prison. Because if you stay stuck in the past, you are unable to one, be present, and two, move into your future. So our first lesson, if you will, that we take away from these words, forget about what is behind you. Rena Tarbit, who was an incredible woman in her own right, um, she was very high level with the Mary Kay Cosmetics Organization, She passed away uh, some years ago, but I had the incredible pleasure of getting to meet her in person on her farewell speaking tour. And one of the things that she said, both in person and also in her book, about the past, she would always say, lick a finger, turn the page, let's go. She would share with you that it's important to learn the lesson, get rid of the experience. Learn the lesson, whatever it is, get rid of the experience because the experience has emotions attached to it. Emotions can sometimes, in some instances, cloud your judgment, uh, enable you to make poor decisions, Um, And they can also be wonderful things as well. But the thing is, is we're not meant to hold on and stay back there in what is behind us. And Paul tells us right here, he gives us this perfect example. Forgetting what is behind. Friends, remember what is behind Paul. Paul was... A Hebrew of Hebrews, right? He was the Pharisee of Pharisees. He was a persecutor of the early Christians. He was faultless in his legalistic righteousness. You thought the Pharisees that followed Jesus around, you know, questioning him, trying to trip him up with the law were bad? Oh, they had nothing on Paul. And Paul is very open about that because Paul uses that as an example to show the immeasurable love of God and his grace. Paul let go of the old ways behind him so that he could focus on what is ahead of him and be in the present. So letting go of the past, that's our first thing. Oh, friends, I encourage you. I encourage you to make that a regular practice. Oftentimes I will have in random parts of the day, which is how I know it's the enemy. The enemy loves to use your past failures, by the way, to get you off track, to get you stuck, to prevent you from doing what it is that God is calling you to do. So just know that as well. There will be random parts of my day where something that I haven't thought about in years will come up. And it could be anything from a small mistake to something really big and something that was really bad for me and something that was just really difficult for me to move past. And that will just come up in my mind. And at that point, I have two choices. I can either sit 
and ruminate in that awful past mistake. Or I can simply say, nope, not today. And refocus my thoughts on something else. Refocus my thoughts on gratitude that God has forgiven me. Refocus on what it is that God is asking me to do now. So friends, when those things come up, recognize them for what they are. Attempts of the enemy to slow down your progress, to get you stuck, to keep you from starting, to keep you from doing what it is that God has called you to do. All right, the second thing here, right? Paul says, forgetting what is behind me. Number two, straining toward what is ahead. That is our future planning, right? And again, another place that we shouldn't spend too much of our time, but that is important to sit down and spend time with God saying, God, where do you want me to go? Where do you want to take me? What do you want me to do for you? What does your will for my life look like? Ultimately, straining toward what is ahead is what we have in Christ. Straining toward what is ahead is eternity. Straining toward what is ahead is hopefully the words of our God saying, Well done, good and faithful servant. Straining toward what is ahead is bigger than your next promotion at work. Bigger than the next book you write. Bigger than whatever accolade you want to come up with. Straining toward what is ahead is the glory of God that we enter into when this life is over. So we have, we're forgetting what is behind us in the past. We're straining toward what is ahead. And how we get there is pressing on. Paul talks about the past, forget what's behind. He talks about the future, strain what, straining toward what is ahead. And then he brings us to the present. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. What you do now, what you are doing now, As you press on toward the goal, toward what is ahead, that is how you get to what is ahead, right? What you are doing now, the step you're in now, the step you are taking now, whether it is planning, whether it is execution, whether it is review, whatever it is, what you are doing now in the present will either take you forward to where you want to go or it will send you backward to go sit and stew in your past. The phrase presence of mind is coming um, to me right now and I think that's because it's very important for us to pay attention to where we are right now. You hear a lot about living in the moment about being present, about being in the present moment, paying attention. And that is something, friends, that we have to actively work at. And friends, there are a lot of techniques that you can do for this. But the first and most important thing is your awareness. Be aware of where you are right now. Are you Sitting in the past behind you? Is that where your mind is? Are you spending all of your time future planning or worrying about things that haven't happened and probably never will happen? Because let's face it, 
a giant chunk of the things that we worry about never actually come to pass. So it's kind of a waste of time to worry about them, don't you think? And when you worry about them, you're not allowing yourself to fully trust in God. Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 6 not to worry about what we will eat or what we will wear. He tells us not to worry. For your Father in heaven knows that you need these things. Look at all of the wonderful things that he does in his creation. How he feeds the birds, how he clothes the lilies. And are you not worth so much more than those things to him? So friends, today I invite you to spend a little time evaluating where you spend most of your time. Do you spend it in the past? Do you spend it in the future? Or do you spend it right here in the present? Do you spend it right here in the present doing the work that your father has called you to do? Thank you, friend, for being here with me today. Y'all, it truly is such a blessing and a joy to be on this journey with you. All honor, all glory, all everything goes to God for allowing me to be here with you every day. And friend, I want to know what's on your heart and what's on your mind. So leave me a comment or send me a message and let me know. I also want to invite you to come back and join me for our next episode to talk about walking in the ways commanded by the Lord. And we'll be in Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 22 and 23. Until then. Hey friend, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. It's my pleasure as always to be here with you. If what you listened to today resonated with you, if you enjoyed listening to the show, do me a favor, go ahead and like and subscribe to this podcast and leave a review. Those reviews are so helpful. I can't even tell you how much I appreciate each and every single one of them. And go ahead and share this episode out with a friend. Invite them along for a walk through the word and let's enjoy that daily bread together. See you tomorrow.